Now, we're going to go straight over to our regular guest at this point. Uh, he is the head of Young Voices UK. He comes on every single Tuesday, uh, usually at this time, uh, Jason Reed. Uh, good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Great to be with you again. Uh, I've got written down here uh, that there's an interloper here as well. Is that right? Is Connor, Connor Tomlinson with you? There is. I have to apologise for inviting him yeah, along. Yeah, because he's obsessed with Superman, that. isn't he? Well, let, he let is, me ask yeah. you both. Well, let me ask you both uh, what you feel about uh, the uh, advent of Superman the Bisexual. Uh, DC Comics have taken it upon themselves to make the latest incarnation of Superman, the world's favourite superhero, bisexual. Uh, why have they done that? What's the point? Uh, can anyone explain it to me? I should say, first of all, the reason, that, the reason that Connor is here is because he's very much an expert on this kind of thing, whereas I'm not. So maybe, Connor, you could give us a bit of background, first of all, about what's happened and what it means. And, but, and remember, Connor, we've only got uh, 10 minutes, so uh, yeah, no, that's don't totally want one of your hour and a half <laughs> lectures, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I did that earlier for someone else, don't worry. I bet you uh, did. Yeah. <laughs> to, to condense it down, basically, in 2011, they rebooted Superman back from issue one, even though it was up to about issue 900, been running for, since 1938. And everyone hated it because the main comic... Uh, they couldn't get a secure writer because editors started annoying them. And then the second one, Action Comics, they had a socialist come and write it. He said, so Superman's a socialist superhero. Wasn't very successful. So in 2016, they wiped Slate clean, killed him off, brought back old Superman and brought in his son. So after that, 2018, the comic started going downhill because they brought in a new writer. And so they got rid of Superman and went, oh, uh, it was actually not because they had a successful run before. It's because the new writer was, uh, wasn't writing it. He's just an old fuddy-duddy. Superman's irrelevant because how can you have a straight white male hero in the Trump era? Yeah. So they made his son now the new <laughs> Superman. Uh, until about a week ago, this, this is guy... John, John Kent, son of Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Yeah. Well, about a week ago, he was in a relationship with a new Wonder Woman called Yara Flora, who's a Brazilian Wonder Woman, because they did, this, they did a diverse reboot where Batman's gay and Flash is non-binary. Totally ridiculous. So now for yesterday, National Coming Out Day in America, just like they did with Robin during Pride Month, they've decided to retcon him as being bisexual, break him up with from Wonder Woman in his current relationship and stick him with a fella. OK. Uh, and uh, what do you think about that, Connor? Uh, I'm not particularly a fan of random character changes for political reasons, especially because the new fella, funnily enough, if you look at the uh, article that the writer Tom Taylor has put out, first of all, he said the reason we did it is because we didn't need another, quote, straight male saviour. So it's for expressly political reasons. And then his new boyfriend is a pink haired, quote, hacktivist. Jay Naka, Na Nakamura. Jay Nakamura. Yeah. Uh, Easy name to say. Um, so the, the, this new fella is inspired by his mum, Lois Lane, which everyone thinks, oh, we all know Lois Lane, right? Well, two years ago, Lois Lane got a comic called Lois Lane, Enemy of the People. And that was about Lois Lane taking on the Trump administration in person about their evil border policy. And she gets to yell at Sarah Huckabee Sanders in the press room. So if he's inspired by that, Lois Lane, this entire move is very political. Yes. Uh, what do you think about it, Jason? I partially agree with Connor, but can you see, Connor, how someone who is bisexual might be offended by that reaction? Because it, the implication is that there are, although we accept your sexuality, there are some parts of society that you're not welcome in, some spaces where you're still explicitly barred. You know, acceptance of LGBT plus identities is still extremely new in terms of uh, human history, society's history. There are still people around today who have to protest with Stonewall in the 60s for their for their rights. Um, and so it does feel a little bit soon, perhaps, to be saying um, sexuality is so irrelevant that we can't be incorporating it into a plot line like this. The part I do agree with you on is the, is the explicitly political yeah. part, that it, uh, whereas the writer is saying, you know, we can't have straight male heroes. That's well, yeah, why not? Why anyone. can't we have straight male heroes? So the writer is called Tom Taylor. He mm. said... I've always said everyone needs heroes and everyone deserves to see themselves in their heroes. I'm very grateful uh, to uh, DC and Warner Brothers uh, to share this idea. Well, the point is, uh, well, that's OK if you happen to be bisexual. But if, for example, you take someone like me, I'm not bisexual. Uh, therefore, I do not see my hero, uh, any of myself in this superhero. So he's serving one part of the community and excluding another, i.e. me. And I take offence to that. 
Well, that's exactly the problem with saying, oh, to see yourself in a hero, they've got to be the same identity marker as you. The entire reason Superman was so popular is because he placed heroic virtues over above and who he is. Now, reminder, Superman's not even human. He's technically an alien. So, so is John. So it's pretty difficult for any human to see themselves in Superman by this logic. But the idea of the intersectional ideologues like Taylor and a lot of people who are running Marvel and DC is that you've got to be gay to see your, uh, there's got to be a gay superhero if you're gay. There's got to be a black superhero if you're black. And that means that, Heroics are no longer based on what you do, but who you are. And the disturbing implication of that, of course, is, well, who becomes the villain? The villain is not what they do, but it's who they are. And so if the heroes are all of the diverse characteristics in the oppression Olympics, you can have uh, a trans disabled Superman next. Well, who are the villains? It's, of course, the straight white males that they would like to exclude. And that is a very dangerous uh, line to walk down, ideal-wise. Connor, is this uh, commercially a good idea? Because uh, Robin recently became bisexual, doesn't he? Uh, m many of us weren't that surprised about that. But uh, so, <laughs> so he, he's become bisexual i don't know how that worked out but uh, will this be a commercially good move on the part of dc comics uh it's not a commercially good move for the american comics industry at all because since 2014 marvel did something similar with new marvel where they made iron man a black female and captain america uh as african american uh, not african american uh what was it latino american female there we go um and their sales tanked and now if you look at the american comics market for last year in total uh, marvel and dc shipped about 15 million units sales the manga market in Japan has outgrown that. Now, I don't read manga, so this is what's heartbreaking for me. But uh, one single anime called it something like Demon Slayer or something like that, because it was very popular, 100 million units in America. So one single anime is outselling the entire American comic market 10 to 1. And that's because of all the woeful wokery that's infiltrated the stories. The stories are no longer about individual characters. They're about identity markers. And that makes characters very shallow. And it means their stories can't go anywhere. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they're sort of subjugating story and character uh, to making some sort of political point. Uh, just before you go, uh, uh, Jason, uh, I wanted to talk to you. It's a very powerful piece uh, in the mail on Sunday uh, saying when will the virtual signaling uh, virtue signaling football world speak out on Qatar of course that's where the World Cup is going to be it is a place where to be gay is illegal uh, gay people are routinely arrested they're persecuted uh, Qatar has a woeful human rights record uh, both on uh, homosexuals and women uh, uh, the, the, many of their their stadiums were produced and constructed by virtual slave workers. Uh, so uh, what do we feel about the fact that uh, St. Uh, Gareth Woodgate, St. Uh, Gary Lineker, David Beckham, uh, all these figures who are going to take part in the World Cup, they haven't said anything about these uh, abuses of human rights in Qatar and yet every week they get down on their knee uh, to pray to uh, Black Lives Matter they take the knee uh, for uh, a stance against anti-racism they're, they're noisy on one front and quiet on the other it's hypocrisy isn't it well it's, it's very easy to signal your virtue isn't it when you're in a, a country that accepts it and like Britain has a vibrant debate and we can come on the media and discuss whether they did the right thing or not but we have that open debate which isn't necessarily the case in other countries like Qatar but just to play devil's advocate a little bit I do feel a little bit sorry for the players because I'm not sure what they're actually supposed to be doing are we suggesting that they boycott the World Cup that would be seen as a betrayal there'd be quite a backlash from the fans then they're pretty powerless aren't they to do anything about it and perhaps there's an argument that we should be working with countries like Qatar to try to make some kind of difference rather than shutting ourselves off from them and just leaving the gay well, people I, in Qatar I, to their to their fate. I take that point. Uh, and I once, uh, I talked to Peter Tatchell about this and I suggested uh, perhaps that England should boycott uh, the Qatar World Cup uh, because of their woeful records uh, on gay rights uh, and indeed on women's rights. I mean, it is a terrible place when it comes... Uh, to uh, the rights of homosexuals and of females. Uh, but uh, he, Peter Tatchell said to me, no, 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 we should go and we should use this opportunity uh, to make a noise about uh, how they do abuse uh, gay rights, how they do abuse uh, women's rights. Uh, so that's a fair point. I take that point. Uh, but what are we getting uh, from our football uh, establishment absolutely nothing sheer silence uh, you might even suspect that it's money talking uh, and we're off to the world cup where everybody make lots and lots of money tv rights all that stuff uh, and best keep quiet about the troublesome side of this uh, event yeah that's the root of the problem isn't it that they're not 
it shows up the fact that they're not really um, all that concerned about Black Lives Matter or police brutality or whatever other cause it is that they're pretending to, to care about when they're in this country or in countries where it's more acceptable to express those kinds of viewpoints, that really they're just being advised by their, their PR representatives. Their, um, it, it is just about when, when the hand that feeds you is saying something different, then you just start to keep your mouth shut. And it, it does, that in itself feels like a bit of a betrayal because all the people who started supporting the England football team as a result of their support for something like Black Lives Matter realised that it was never genuine to begin with. Yeah, it's just a gesture that they're just doing it. They don't even think yeah. about it, I don't think, anymore. But uh, we'll give them uh, the benefit of the doubt for now. Uh, but going forward, as we approach that uh, big World Cup event, uh, if the football world stays silent, particularly people like Gary Lineker and Gareth Woodgate, uh, who've made such a thing of supporting taking the knee to Black Lives Matter, if they stay silent, then shame on them. Uh, let's use this event to highlight the fact that Qatar is a dreadful place uh, to live if you're gay or if you're a woman. Uh, listen, guys, uh, Jason Reed and Connor Tomlinson, both from Young Voices UK, uh, what a pleasure to talk to both of you. Uh, they'll be back, or Jason will be back on uh, next Tuesday.